Okay, does everybody have the name of my YouTube channel? It's Martha Catherine Back PhD, right? And then the name of this class, I think, I think it's World Philosophies Fall 2001 or I mean, it's pretty obvious. I can't remember which thing I put first, the world or the fall or the 2001, you know, but it has all that data on it. So I think you can find it. Um, and I do, my standard operating procedure is when the class is done, I will get a link and I will forward it to you within 10 or 15 minutes of the class ending. But I will also post it onto the YouTube channel. So if you want to look back at a lecture or if you miss a class, um, and then you can keep up with the class and with the written assignments. So for example, uh, the nature of the assignments, the posts, you can um, do what I call a post, and I'll cover that for the AUW students. Um, you can do that just by looking at the video, it's fine. Um, all right, so let me do a screen share here. And some of this is redundant for the Lion students, but I'll go over it a little faster than I did last time because I want to put you in breakout groups and I'm going to ask you, what is your world view? And you have to, the AUW students have to just, they don't like, what is it? What do you want? It's whatever you think it is. And so the uh, Lion students have already done this. And so maybe this time when you, when, when you go into breakout groups, what the heck? Um, the Alliance students would start, start out, right? So basically the Alliance students might start out to say what they said their worldview was last time or if they changed it, but they might, they sort of understand the way the dialogue goes and then other students should present. But, but before that, um, I want you to have introductions within your breakout groups, right? You introduce yourself, you say what country you're from or what part of the US you're from. You might say something about your background. It really depends upon how much you want to say uh, because I don't really want students to feel compelled to reveal something that they think is personal, but just let me give you an example of to me, when a student says these things, I have such admiration for them. And I would like all of you to really develop a lot of deep respect for each other because a lot of you have really overcome a lot of obstacles to get to this point. So anyway, there was one student in my other class. She's from originally a small town in Nepal and her parents died, she was an orphan. So she was in a rural orphanage. Then during COVID, it shut down. So now she's in an orphanage in the city. And it's just amazing, right? She's pulled herself up this far. She's in college. She's at a good liberal arts college. She had to test really well and to know English really well. And it's just so amazing to me. So, so you can start out in your breakout groups. Um, Introducing yourself, saying something that you would like the other people to know or something about all the obstacles you've had to overcome. Uh, another big theme in recent human history is that education is the ticket to a better life. And I think all of you agree on that and you are trying to get that ticket, you know, get that piece of paper and move up the socioeconomic ladder. And it's really important when we 
when a society stops having upward mobility, especially at this point in history, there gets to be unrest, right? So all, so all of you are really a part of history. You're making history. The fact that you're moving up makes it means that you're making good history, right? So I, you know, I'm really on your side. So um, we'll go over the syllabus quickly or not too slowly because in the breakout groups, you the AUW students might have a question that the Lion students can answer. And then each group needs to have a spokesperson that will say, here's the questions that we had that nobody could answer. And then I, th I think I said, you, break, you also break down into pairs so that each of you introduces the person that you were paired with. But there's also going to be these bigger groups that are, um, that are reporting in. There's a one person reporting. Now, the problem is right now is that a very small fraction of the people that are supposed to be here are here. Um, we only have 10 students out of 25. And I, okay. So let me just see if somebody is emailing me, okay? Um, Okay. All right, so here's someone who wants to get invited. So I'll just invite them in. Um, oh my goodness. Well, I'll do this later. Um, all right, let me see if Somebody is. All right. Okay. Um, I have some students. Where was this posted? Okay. Okay, so does somebody want to? So Blaine said, Where was this posted? Um, oh, Dr. Beck, um, usually AUW gives like a, an, a Zoom ID on the master schedule. So usually students go there, but I know it's like a personal one. I know, Rossi, but the trouble is I can't, the Lion students can't get into that. That's why I had to create a whole list on my own personal Gmail account, right? Yeah. Okay. So Thomas says not everyone received the email link on the Lion end. Okay. Actually, what I read, what I need to know is, did anyone from Lion get the email link? Is I got the email wrong? link. Okay. That. Okay, so Thomas got it. I've, that that's just bizarre to me, but I will figure that out. Um, why would some get it and others not? if I have you all on the, all the same list. So, okay, do, does everybody, how about if people from Lion, how about if one person takes it on them? Well, okay. So Samantha, would you mind inviting Giovanni Hinkson? Um, I do not have her email. If you have it, I can uh, forward yeah. it to them. Yeah. Okay. Well, Professor. Yes. 
Here are some of one of my friends. She want to join, but she didn't register officially. It is possible. Yeah. Can I share her link? Yes, you can. I have three or four that have um, asked, and it's just like it's so late. I can't do it during the class. But if anybody, let's see. Okay, Professor, um, I'm sharing. Okay. Um, all right, here's another one. Does anybody, oh, Shay Bibi, yeah. She's, she should be in, does any, everybody? Shah, Shahana Bibi, maybe. Yes, do you want to? Yeah, her, yeah her, I want to share. Her email is S-H-A-Y Bibi, you okay, want to do Professor, that? Professor, I, I know her, she's my friend. Okay, good. Um, here's another one, Poon, Poonam Borma. Somebody want to send her the link? P U N A M dot B O R M A. Oh, boy. Let's see. Elizabeth Keycone, does anyone know her? Okay. Jame. I'll just have to do this while you're in your groups. I can't. There's too many of them. All right. Uh, let's just go. So I, I have the recording. You know, I have this recorded so that the students who miss it can. Oh, God. All right. Here we go. All right. So here is the syllabus for the AUW template. And I will go over it. And again, AUW students, if you have a question, you can, when you're in the breakout groups, you can ask that. You could ask me right now, but um, probably, you know, anyway, you could try asking in the breakout group. And if that doesn't work, then when we get back together. So this is the description of the class. We start out with the ancient Greeks and what I call the classical virtues. Then we compare Socrates and Jesus. Um, and then we study Confucianism and we compare Confucius and the Analects, Hinduism, and we talk about Gandhi and um, Buddhism and Buddha's life, Islam and Muhammad. And so the, the, the way I teach the class is how it is that the character traits, the classical virtues, that these people have those same virtues. And the reason I teach it that way isn't because it, it isn't more complex. It's complex. But what you hear, what you read in the newspaper, all of the stuff that you sort of absorb, it always shows the differences, I think. So this is a really different way of looking at it that shows the similarities. So then you figure out similarity and difference. Um, the other thing is that you live in countries that are different um, dominant religions. So if you're from Sri Lanka, it's a dominant Buddhist country, but a number of AUW students are Muslims in Sri Lanka. Then there's, you know, Bangladesh is a dominant Muslim country, but Cambodia is a dominant Muslim country. Buddhist country. And then the US is a dominant Christian. But I think we've got some students that are would probably identify as um, secular humanist. So we have um, a lot of variety. And I think that's great. You can talk about that in your groups today. What 
particular religious tradition or what, if somebody asked you, if you said, um, I don't associate with any religious tradition, I'm a secularist or a humanist, you can go ahead and just explain yourself. We're gonna read a lot of that and a lot of different varieties. Then you could talk if you want to about how you, how you were raised to think the relation between science and religion is, or science and social science and religion, or what in your worldview, how important is science, how important is social science or socialization, culture, and how important is, um, is religion in related in relation to all those other things? How important is philosophy? How, how important has that been to you so far in your life? But anyway, so, so we're gonna go over the similarities. And my big thing is we have a common humanity. The other thing that's important is that both of the schools that you go to, small liberal arts schools, the, I am going to give you the foundation for those schools. Those schools would not be possible without this commitment or this assumption that we have a common humanity. And you can put students in a college together and administrators and faculty members that come from any sort of religious tradition, any kind of philosophical tradition, um, secular or non-secular, um, and we don't discriminate, neither school discriminates based on uh, race, gender, sexual orientation, um, ethnicity, philosophy, right? But somehow we all get along. Not only that, we also expect each other to be virtuous, right? We do depend upon each other to be honest, to be even tempered, to be self-controlled, to um, be engage in uh, rational ambition, rational honor. We can go over these, but anyway, you know that you depend upon each other to uh, exercise certain character traits. So you know that those character traits exist in addition to or apart from these different uh, philosophies that you have. So basically, I think not only is it nice, it's, all, it's been nice to teach at Lyon for 25 years because I just say, you can agree with this or not, but it is the foundation of the college and it's my job. Now, I think it's really interesting that we have these two colleges on absolutely the opposite side of the world. When we get over daylight saving, it will be exactly 12 hour difference. And yet they have the same foundation. So I think that's exciting. Um, so the learning outcomes and uh, critical thinking, all this sort of stuff, I've written the, I've organized the class so that you, you engage in these activities. And I will talk about, the, oh, okay. So here are the assignments. You have 10 of what I call a post, okay? So there's two class days every week and there's actually more than 10 weeks so that there are, you can skip a week or two Plus you can do an extra credit if you want to. And there aren't any posts due on the week that a paper is due, but you could do a post that week since you sat through class and it wouldn't be that hard. And that would be extra credit. I will take the top 10 grades. If you do extra credit, I will, you know, I'll throw out your worst grades and put in your extra credit grade. So here's, here's how the post works. And I did put it on when I put the announcement of an assignment, when I created it, I did write this into that announcement. So you don't have to just take the oral 
uh, what I say orally. All right. So before each class, except today, of course, you read the assignment and you write down at least three things that you definitely want to talk about in class, in the breakout rooms. They might be things you thought were really important that you would like to talk to the other students about, right? It's all about you, you getting to understand your own mind, okay? I have already made up my mind <laughs> to teach the class. I I have made up my mind. Every single assignment has Professor Beck's mind built into it. You don't need to hear any more about me. <laughs> and um, I just assume that you've read it. And I can tell that you've read it by how sophisticated those comments or questions are. And they, you know, if you write three things. I don't get what he means by that. I don't get with that. And I don't get that. You're not communicating to me that that you read it, right? That's just, you could really just eyeball it and say that. So try to show me in your comments or questions that you really have read it carefully. And also that you're connecting it to something we've already read, right? Just let me know at what level you're processing the class. And some will be more sophisticated than others. But if you just keep trying to reflect on the material, to, uh, to you know, be surprised that this is so different from that, or to be surprised that this is so similar to that, right? Um, or some application that explains why my Buddhist friend does this, right? You could do that. Anyway, three of those. And then during the class, you listen to other students. Hopefully, I mean, there might be something that I said, but three things that you learned from other students during the class. And then after you've reflect it. So it's a reflective consciousness. You think, okay, what is my final takeaway from that class? What did I really learn most in that class? And um, the students need to write, what is your worldview? You're going to talk about it in your breakout groups, but the post for today, or for Lion students, it was last time, is 150 words on what is my worldview, right? Another few words on what did I learn from other people during class? And then, okay, what's my final takeaway? Have I already expanded my worldview? And then that's the main thing is you start to know yourself. What do I really think? Do I agree with that? Or also, I didn't even know that, right? I want to include that, <laughs> right? That's important, I sh you know? So you're basically expanding your way of understanding the universe, the human condition, how all of your disciplines, academic disciplines fit together, how academic life it can be, you know, how you play that out in your day-to-day -day life, how it is that being an educated person would make you a better person than if you weren't educated. Um, anyway, so the final paper, again, what is my worldview? So after every class, you say, what is my final takeaway from this class? Do I think I'm going to use it in my final or not, right? And of course, you don't know by the end of the class, but all you know is, well, so far, I think I would like to include this for this reason. All right. So for every class day, you have that. Three points before while you're reading, three points during, and then your reflection. Are you going to include it? Why? And that has to be at least 200 words 
for each class day. And then there's two class days. So on Friday noon, you, or Thursday, I actually make you feel guilty because <laughs> I put on it that it's due and I put Thursday at noon or, or Friday and then I won't grade it down if you hand it in Friday, but I'll make you feel guilty <laughs> because, you know, if I get all of them the same day, then it's much harder than if I could pace myself if I get some of them a little earlier. But again, you're having to pace yourselves also. So, um, so we're all pacing ourselves. And one week you might have less to do in your other classes, you'll post it earlier. But anyway, so you have 10 of those to do. Then you have one paper early on about the personal virtues. I'll summarize that in a sec. Another paper about political virtues or humanism. And then another paper about these different religions and the humanist branches, and then your final paper. So, so inquiry and analysis, critical thinking, written communication, oral communication, that's the breakout groups, reading. Hopefully, you know, as you read, okay, I can't read anything unless I can apply it to my life or I can connect it with other things I've read or, you know, otherwise it just, I don't remember. So it's just learning how to read with an authentic desire to learn, right? Because my life depends upon this. And then you get to be a better reader, right? You're not just reading it because Professor Beck wants to do this and you're checking it off the checklist. You just, um, I wasn't a reader per se, right? I did not read to escape from reality or anything. I, but I always read, when I did read, I always read to live a better life, right? So, so learning how to read is important and it does matter, you know, why you're reading it. Um, but again, you can teach yourself how to read with meaning or just how to read more carefully, more in a more connected way. Okay, information, teamwork. So I don't have any of you doing assignments that you have to do in a team. Um, the breakout rooms are dialogue, but the written work is your own. You can talk to other people about your ideas. You can even talk to someone about, okay, do you think this is a good thesis statement? Do you think it's a good argument, right? But I always have office hours. You can always talk to me, but if you'd rather talk to a peer, that's fine. It's just when you finally come down to write it, it has to be your own work. Obviously intercultural and obviously foundation for lifelong learning. That's big. Um, attendance is required. Um, if you're absent, you watch the YouTube video. And if your post is more than a week late, please explain at the top of the post, because lots of you have a lot of obstacles, but you just need to explain it to me. I do have um, office hours approximately the same time as the class starts a half an hour later or by appointment. So I can work stuff out. It just takes a little coordinating. Um, and here are the basic topics. Uh, what makes a society great? Um, let's see, today is, sorry guys, today is the 22nd for, <laughs> Um, in America, but the 23rd. And there is, I did correct the syllabus on one of those copies, but I guess I got the wrong one. Anyway, I will, I can switch that, but I don't think that should be horribly confusing, right? All you do is remember in America, 
it's 11 hours earlier. So the Americans are taking this class at night. So if you, hopefully that won't throw you off too much. And I truly fixed one version of this, but here we are, it wasn't. Um, so write the essay. Um, okay, let's see. I think that, yeah, next time we'll get to Athens. So we're going to talk about Athenian democracy. And so America supposedly <laughs> is or was somewhere in there a democracy. And um, it's, we're gonna talk about what, how it was structured and how it was at its peak and then how they corrupted it and they lost their democracy. And um, I think it's really going to be interesting. And I wish I could be, uh, if I come into the breakout room, please pretend I'm not there, okay? I'm a fly on the wall. Um, I really don't want to go in the breakout rooms to check up on you. If you're having trouble, somebody just come in to where I am and ask. Because one time I did go into the breakout rooms and people were just gossiping and complaining about me. <laughs> and I thought, what a waste of time, right? So if you don't get it, instantly come to me. If I do come in, it's not to spy on you. It's because I'm incredibly curious <laughs> about what you're going to say. But anyway, so when we talk about Athenian democracy, I definitely want the Americans to say, yeah, this is what America's like. And, um, you know, Americans could say, yeah, we're still at our peak or, uh oh, we're corrupting it or, ah, it's already gone. Um, but then the students from these other countries can talk about their impression of America, right? What? What do they think of America? Unfortunately, I wish more, I wish fewer of you would have an opinion of America, but America has this very, what, big platform or whatever you want to call it. So I think it would be really interesting to find out what the AUW students think of America and whether it's, you know, really a democracy or not, and whether they think our democracy is getting corrupted. They can also talk about their own societies, which is fascinating. And that their politicians tell them they're a democracy, but they're really not, right? They're so corrupt. And I have had a lot of students say that, and that's really interesting. I had a student from Syria, Syria, okay? And we get all this data, we get information and, you know, we get all this news about how authoritarian they are and how cruel they are, blah, blah. Well, she said in the elections, they always, the rhetoric always says, we're a democracy and we're here to serve you and we protect you. <laughs> so I think it's really, I hope all of you really enjoy comparing notes on the public image of your country as opposed to a person who lives there, what they think of what's going on. Um, and then we do uh, talking to a religious leader and whether he really is holy. And we talk about what does it mean to be a good religious leader? We talk about um, what Socrates, a Socratic way of life, which is a standard liberal arts professor model, really. And we'll get to that. And then the Crito is he got accused of corrupting the youth. <laughs> so you can, you can, does Professor Beck corrupt the youth, you know? And does she believe in the city's God? So he got accused of not believing in the official uh, state religion. Um, all right. So there's that section on Athens. Then there's a section on the classical virtues. Then there's a section on the union of science and uh, religion, faith. 
and it's connected to personal well-being. So the first articles by a surgeon who was raised in a very strict Jewish background, he totally rebelled, became an atheist, and then he sort of came back and said, now wait a second, a good religious tradition helps the psyche and the whole psychophysical, the way your body uh, functions. And so they really ought to go together. And then the next one is revenge. Um, it's natural to want to protect yourself, but it's also natural to forgive. And so he combines a biological reactions with also sociology. If you're a well-structured society and you have confidence that the court system, the legal system will actually punish the person you want to take rent, revenge from and punish them appropriately, then you can let go. So these instinctual reactions, how forceful they are and whether you, you, know, they, you act on them depends upon your society also. You can't separate those. And then the questions of um, stress and depression. Sorry, there's also a one on depression, which I'll fit in here. Um, then the paper, first paper is due. It's related to these virtues with a focus on the personal issues, stress, depression, revenge, and just um, uh, well-being, a feeling of well-being. All right, then the second section, Aristotle has political virtues, the virtue of a citizen. So we have, we read an article about in America, and, and again, those of you who aren't from America, you also, you get engaged. You know the difference between educated voters in your country and uneducated voters. So this is, these are universal issues across the board. Um, then when the papers are due, I do have you break into groups and give formal presentations of your papers. And I have a rubric for that. Then we do um, sexism, an outline about all the ways that um, a culture will put women down, patriarchy. And then I, there's a paper that combines the United Nations, their position on women with um, the tradition, all these other ways that women get oppressed. And we compare the oppression of women with racial oppression and oppression based on sexual orientation. But you can bring in oppression because of ethnicity, right? Um, and I, some of your countries, I think there's more animosity between the ethnic groups than other countries that you have. Um, all right, so we'll talk about that. Then we talk about humanism. And there is a whole history behind it, but um, I'll, so we have a couple days where we read that. And then we have, um, we start in with Confucianism and Confucius Analects. So then the paper number two is just goes through the section on humanism because I give you a couple days before you have to write a paper. So I don't want you to have assigned a reading and then the paper is due the next day. So I give you a week or so to figure out which readings and what ideas from that section of the class you wanna write on. So then um, you present those in class. So we do Confucius, we do Hinduism. Some of the themes that we try to do for each of these is the humanist values. We also do how a tradition can, in theory, not be sexist, but when it gets connected to a sexist culture, it becomes sexist. And then um, environmental protection, you know, based on the worldview of these religions, the societies that are based on them ought to be sustainable and respectful of the environment. So what happens? Like, how does that get uh, messed up? 
And then I'll, I might have time to do some stuff on art because these ancient traditions, the arts are really important because they're an important part of educating your soul, right? Your emotions and your appreciation, right? Of color, design, sound, taste, touch, all of those things to develop a refined sense of that sense of beauty um, is a civilizing influence, but it's also the religions have been a profoundly civilizing influence. Um, okay, Buddhism and then the paper is, is about either Confucianism, Hinduism or Buddhism, the third paper. And then Islam, we cover Islam and you can include that in your final paper. But I, again, I don't want the third paper to be due close, too close to final week because you get too much stuff to do. And then we have just a couple days about um, the union of uh, reason, science, and, and religion, or science and a worldview with some quantum physics, some physicists, and what they thought about God, and then a mathematician. Um, and then we talk about religion and corruption. And I think all of you will be able to understand that every religion can get corrupted in pretty much very similar ways. Uh, politics, money, <laughs> money and power tend to corrupt religion because, uh, because religion is powerful. And so if people want power, they're going to use religion. Um, anyway, so then your final paper, I have the, the dates, I have plagiarism. Um, if, if you refer to readings that we did in the class, you can just use the, um, the date of the stream and then the name of the attachments. If you refer to something outside of the class, you have to have a standard um, style, okay? Um, um, the other point is that please write your papers on the sort of discussions and readings we've had in the class and also your posts. Sometimes students really feel like they're not getting it. So they'll go out, they'll do the extra work of looking up, you know, like Plato or Socrates, and they'll sort of cut and paste and put that in. And first of all, it's plagiarism, but second of all, it's, it's not you. It's, it's somebody else, right? It's not you getting to know your own mind. So if you really are confused to the point where you feel desperate enough to go to this other source, either, I mean, I would prefer that you come to me during office hours. If somehow some students really don't like to do that, if you know somebody else in the class, but don't get into this downward spiral where you meet with a peer and you just complain. <laughs> that it's not good for you. It's not healthy for you to do that. So just be honest, come and talk. Um, and we'll just start from the beginning. Absolutely. Um, strategies to avoid. I think, you know, that's how you can avoid plagiarism. Um, and I do, you know, other information is that I really, really enjoy reading these papers. Um, and I do want you to think of this as you're basically writing a book. Um, you're writing a book for yourself about your worldview and how it developed in the class. I think we could make this huge book where the students, you know, come together. Um, and I really would like to publish books that have what my students say. I'm tired <laughs> of writing all my own stuff and I'm tired of reading. It's, it's pretty incredible that college professors in my prof in philosophy, they, they get paid to be teachers, but what they get rewarded for in their scholarship never mentions students at all. <laughs> like, what? So it's too bad because I think those would be really good books. But what the theme of the book would be is that uh, 
what is your generation? Your generation is picking up at a certain point in history and you're going to create a culture right during your time. And of course, world philosophies is about the fact that your generation is creating a global civilization, whether you like it or not, whether you want to or not, but the class gives you some materials for you to feel like you're part of that process. Uh, it's going to have to be a sustainable culture. It's going to have to be, you know, interfaith culture. It's going to have to combine some kind of humanism for people who just won't touch religion with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> Or, you know, you're literally trying to create some kind of worldview that you can put out there for the next generation to create uh, a better culture. So finally, my last point is that ideas really matter, right? It really matters how you think. And when people say something like, people are really driven by fear, I go, no, they're not. They're driven by their idea of what they're afraid of and of who's the cause and how to cure it. And all of that stuff is a worldview. Those are ideas. And people disagree very profoundly about the causes of their fears and the way to get over them. So they aren't primarily driven by fear. They're driven by their ideas connected to the fear, okay? That's why philosophy is important, even though I think the stereotype is that it's not important because <laughs> it's, it's too removed from daily life. I, I do not believe that. Daily life, we're constantly trying to make sense of our daily lives and we develop these ideas and then we fall in love with their ideas and we might be so in love with their ideas that we can't even function in daily life. And that's how powerful ideas are. So, all right. Now, if you have questions, I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms. And I suppose right away, you could deal with questions about the syllabus if you want to. Otherwise, inter well, first of all, introduce yourself, where you're from, something you'd like the other students to know, um, maybe some reaction you had to what I just said, or what you think you want, what you want to learn from this class, um, just something, and then pair off, make sure that a person knows that they're going to introduce, um, who they're going to introduce when we get back together. Then the next thing was, um, what, what is your worldview? So just introduce yourself something you would want the other students to know. Then you go around, what is your worldview? Talk about that. Again, it doesn't literally have to be first you and then you, you know, you can get into a dialogue as long as everybody talks by the end of the time. Um, and then any questions on the syllabus? Okay, and so I'll put you in these breakout rooms. And I guess I'll put you in if it's okay with you for 15 minutes so that you have time. But if one of the groups is faltering, please um, pick a spokesperson. Pick one person that would be the spokesperson for going back into the main room to see me and say, we, we ran out of stuff to talk about. Um, or we have a question, Silva, something like that. Um, so I think I'll try you for 15 minutes and see if that works. Now, here we go. Breakout rooms. And it will take a minute because... Um, all right, let me ask you a question first. Is anybody having problems with their internet going down and up and down and up? Raise your hand, put a hand raiser up there. Because again, last time I had so many students 
that I put them in the breakout rooms that were too small, right? And so you'd have like five in a breakout room and three of them, their internet went down. So I just want to, and then I'll put you also in different groups. Okay, so I mean, it looks like it's not as much of a problem uh, for this group, which is fine. That means I can put you in smaller groups. Um, all right, yeah, I guess both of them. Um, okay, so the way you post your, oh yeah. Okay, so the worldview essay, the lion students, you could just combine it with the one from this week so that I just get one on Thursday or Friday of this week from everybody. Um, does that answer your question? Somebody? Professor? Yeah. Yes, Thank you. Hello, Professor. <clears throat> yeah. Professor, I'm not registered for this course. That's okay, so... Tommy. We can, we'll fix that later. It's fine. I actually have, I think I, yeah, I'll get all that stuff. Actually, I'll do that right now while you're in your breakout groups, okay? And you could put that in the chat if you want to. That's great. Um, so, yeah, no prob. Okay, so I'm going to put you, I guess, in groups of five and see how that works. And I will switch around a little bit to try and get as much of a mix. So you might get kicked out of a group uh, in the first minute or so. Um, yeah, here we have one right away that has uh, three Americans in it. This is not good. Um, okay. Okay, um, I think I'll put you in um, some in fewer groups. I think they're too small. Some of them just have three students. So um, all it gives me is add a room. I wanna subtract a room. Um, oh, well, <laughs> whatever, let me start. Oh, well, there you go. And I'm going to switch you up some. So put up with me. Um, I'll explain. All right. So this one. Uh, Move to number one. Um, Liam, Samantha. Oh, number four, Philippe. Okay. Yeah, that one needs um, number two. Samantha. Hmm. Okay. Oh, Sanjuda. Oh boy. Never saw that name before. Move to number two. Um, two. Um, okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, okay. Um, Thomas. Okay, let's see. Uh, so.
Não, Felipe. Yeah. Tenta. Ops. Um. You can always give me feedback on your posts about whether the breakout rooms are working for you. Um, any suggestions, but let's wait on it a few days so that you can figure out if it just was, it happened to be your group that either worked or didn't work. You know, we need to go with it uh, four classes or so to see if it's working out. I think there's just too many students for the whole group to listen to everybody once. Um, all right, who was the spokesperson for group number one? Me, Dr. Brick. Okay, so Rossi, was that you or Shani John? Yes, it's, it's me. Okay, yeah, it was Rossi's voice, but it was somebody else's, okay. <laughs> All right, so what did I ask you to report in on? Oh, did you have questions on the syllabus, first of all? Um, no, our group was discussing about the situation in Afghanistan and our views on like what America is currently doing right now and linking it to also what was happening in Cambodia with the bombing like at the end of, towards the end of the Vietnam War and beginning the Khmer Rouge regime. And so most of us were thinking that America is not, hasn't learned from its past before they were like having a civil war, trying to gain their independence and fighting for their freedom from Great Britain. But now they are acting as the oppressors because with their money and power, they'll go into countries that they think will provide them with the benefits, stir up the politics and cause chaos for the civilians and then just get out of it and let the civilians be vulnerable and open to danger and deal with it themselves. Like also we were discussing about like the image of like the US Air Force leaving countries like when like another group came into power in the capital city and it just makes the citizens feel like helpless and that they're just there to handle everything by themselves. And it's been the case with Cambodia and now it's also the case with Afghanistan too. Okay, and that it's fine with me if you end up just talking about something like that. Um, as long as everybody gets a chance to talk, right? Yes. And that's the thing is that it's your generation. I do think you should know about this. Um, so Rossi knows because she's Cambodian. I actually remember because I was in high school, right? And I remember um, my dad was a preacher and he sponsored a whole 15, I think, 15 Cambodians that came and the church people helped them adjust. And actually I drove one of them around who was the age of my son. Um, but yeah, it's like we haven't learned anything um, the other thing is that th these politicians uh, give us this bullshit and people believe it, right? So 
the stuff about Afghanistan was all about, we're gonna do um, nation building, right? We're gonna help them build up their nation. And it was nobody who read the fine print would think that that was at all meaningful. Um, and so then people get tired, right? Americans, and then they just wanna pull out. But at a certain point, like the politicians were selling them something and they sort of fell for it then. Anyway, so that's interesting. And that's an interesting historical moment. Um, I'm thinking that America isn't going to be as willing to bring in all these people like they did with Cambodia. There's a whole lot of Vietnamese La Laotians that live in the town that I live in and Cambodians because the churches brought them in. Um, so that is interesting. Um, how about introducing? Did, did you get a chance to introduce yourselves? Okay, now our, I guess let's let's start with at least each group can the spokesperson can say, do you have any questions on the syllabus? And then in general, what went on? And then if we, then we'll try, then we'll do it to the introductions level. But right now, I just wanna make sure every group gets to say, say who's number group number two or who's another spokesperson that can report in. Um, I'm in group two. I can report in. Okay. So um, our group had a little bit of a slow start, but we all ended up introducing ourselves. And as far as I know, we did not have any questions about the syllabus. Um, what we mostly talked about was our personal worldviews and the worldviews of the people in our areas, because we're all from different countries. And so we all had different things to say about people in our groups and people in our communities. And I think we all, at least I, I learned a lot about different areas. And um, we also talked about what we wanted to do after university. That was a big thing. And I really think we kept conversation going pretty well. Okay, is there any, were there any comments by somebody that particularly struck you? I think what struck me the most was I didn't realize how big religion played into worldview because America, while it is a religious country, isn't as strongly and overtly religious as other countries, such as like uh, Bangladesh or, you know, just even like Vietnam. And so while I can go through my life in the U.S. without having to encounter religion or think about it, um, in other countries, religion is such a huge part of life. It is their worldview. It can be at least. Okay, well, I will say, I've taught at Lyon 25 years. I never had, I think everybody in that class from Lyon was secular, or if they weren't, they didn't say so. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. So it, it is the exception. Um, I think like most Lyon students, religion means a lot to them, the majority of them. So that is interesting, Thomas. It's all interesting to me. Um, and then the question is in your generation, are, is your generation gonna become more secular or will climate change issues make people more secular or more religious? That's something I'm wondering about. Um, okay, number three, group three. Anybody know who's who was group three? I think we may have been group three or group five, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, in our group, we had a lot of positive people who viewed the world through a lot of uh, really positive lenses. And we had a lot of internet connections and issues, so it was difficult to understand certain people at different times. But what I think came out of most of it was how positive people view the world, and that even when things are going bad, Sometimes it's better to look on the bright side. And I think that was very interesting. Okay. Anything else specifically that somebody said that you were? It was just really talking about, everybody was just kind of communicating that um, because of the internet issues, it was very difficult to hear. And um, one of the other Lyon students, I believe is from Chile. And so he was talking about how positive, like how he views the world very positively and also, um, through the US and how that's kind of opened up through that area. And there was another girl from the 
other college that was talking about how she views the world through a very positive lens. There weren't really anything specifically like listed or stated, but it was more just kind of looking on the bright side and having hope for the future. Okay. Um, you are literally the hope, right? You have yeah. to be that the hope that you want to see, right? Okay. And so there must be at least one other group that has a spokesperson that hasn't spoken yet. Uh, there is group four. Uh, we we gave it a shot for sure. Um, uh, and we did basic introductions as much as we could. Um, let's see, what we got through were our names. Those are important. Those are important. Uh, and we got through a bit of our world views, but internet issues, I feel like are a common theme here. Uh, nothing particularly spoke out to me. I think that we, in our group, we did have a wide array of religious ideals, which would be good in further conversation if that were to take place. Okay, do you have the names of the people that had the internet issues so that I can make sure to put them in bigger groups, make sure they get distributed so there'd only be one person per group that would have the problem? Do you remember, Liam? Um, I think uh, Shahaz did, um, Funam I think did. Uh, right, no, those are the two that I got actually. What about that other group? Who else can give me some names because they might be not on the internet right now for that very reason? It wasn't necessarily internet connection. It was, ne it was more like speaker quality and it was just very difficult to understand. Like she was definitely there in the group um, and you could hear her speaking. It was just, I think that it just didn't translate through our computers very well. Okay. Um, do you think, would you think people should put things in the chat? Can they, can they type stuff in, in a breakout group? I think you can put stuff in the chat in the breakout group. I think that might be a little bit better in the future, especially for like, if we're having long, long discussions and um, people keep on cutting in and out, it might be a little bit easier to just put it, do it through the chat. Okay. Very good. Um, so Salma, if you're new, I will definitely put on you, put you on the, the um, Google Classroom and I'll put you on the um, in invitation site. So I think I've got the names down of everyone who's coming in. So again, we have to be patient. Um, the Lion students aren't going to be used to this, but there's a lot of turnover in this first week. And um, I, I hope you, you know, you understand that it takes patience. The students are getting juggled around a lot. They get put in a, you know, they get put in different um, level because they're English, you know, and all that sort of a last minute sometimes. And then they need to sign up for stuff or they, they couldn't get into a class related to their major and then all of a sudden the teacher lets them in, so they hop out. So, um, so I'm just telling you to be prepared. I know that AUW students kind of get used to this, but that's just the way it is and you just be patient. Okay, so we only have about eight minutes, um, but how about if we just take four students that really the person they partnered with was so amazing that they just want to tell the rest of us about this person, just like I felt about that student who was an orphan. Does anybody have just want to give a shout out to somebody that they thought was pretty amazing? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> hey, I, I love to go. Okay. I, I didn't, okay. Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Can I repeat, Miss? Well, I asked you to, to, to pair up and you would introduce this other person. And we're not going to have time. But if just four of you just says, I got to say this because they were so amazing. So, Thomas, go ahead. Well, in my group, I was really lucky to talk to Lou, who is from Vietnam. And we went very lightly over introductions. So what I know about Lou is that she is studying a lot about the environment. 
and um, she does not particularly believe in a religion. She doesn't believe in God, which I thought was really cool. I was very interested to hear about that. And um, she was very interested in nature and she loves seafood, which we both love. And um, if I ever visit Vietnam, I'm gonna have seafood with her. And uh, that's Lou and she's really cool. <laughs> Good. All right, somebody else? I right. mean, <clears throat> my room, I, I, we, we couldn't talk a lot of because some guys have had bad connection, but I mean, it, it's normal. And for the next class, we'll be like normal. Everybody's having problem with the connection. And also if we are all international guys, so I cannot say nothing now, but I wish can talk the next class. All right, anybody else wanna contribute? Um, okay, so here we go with the technical stuff then. Um, let me share the screen and, oh boy, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that was the syllabus. Then we have um, the, the paper rubric, let's see, I have five minutes. Let me just talk about what we're going to do. Um, yeah, so everyone knows by now that you can't join the link with uh, AUW Zoom number five because the Lion students aren't allowed into it. So that's why, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I tried to get all the names onto the site. Anyway, again, that's gonna be another big hassle. Everyone just has to be patient. Um, so let me just anticipate what we're gonna do next time. Um, all right, so next time I will talk about Athens and I'll talk about how well-structured it was, how Solon, uh, Plato's, one of Plato's uncles wrote the Constitution of Athens and the design for it. What's the goal? The Greek city states, um, they kept having these civil wars because the rich would just get richer and richer and they didn't care about the poor. And so the poor would rebel. And then they didn't have the resources, like the rich had all the brains to be able to run the country. And so they would try to run the country and it would sort of degenerate and then the rich would take over and then the rich would abuse their power and then the poor would take over. So Solon decided, you know, the only way to have stability is to have a strong and stable middle class. So he structured everything to promote a strong and stable middle class. And that is still true today. Even if you have a monarchy, even if you have an aristocracy or a democracy, that is the gold standard for a strong and stable society. And so there were so many cultural habits and expectations and, um, uh, the buildings and the mythology and all this stuff was all connected to trying to get citizens to think like citizens and to be able to critique their leaders or to replace their leaders based on whether those leaders were doing what they needed to do and what they could do to create a middle class. And I, I am curious to know if that is explicitly what the politicians in your country say, or if they, you know, talk about other stuff to distract you <laughs> because they don't want you to know they're abusing their power. Um, but I think um, I, what I worry about in the, even in the US, there's so much political debate that doesn't get back to the real issue, which is how to create the middle class. We have a shrinking middle class and that's creating a lot of resentment and a lot of 
instability, just like it did in Greek city-states. And the politicians keep distracting the public. You know, they're talking about anything but that. Um, but that is the key. And the two power points are money, the business sector, and then the political sector. And um, they really need to work together. But if the business people get too corrupt, they basically pay for the politicians' campaigns and treat the politicians like they're employees, tell them you make this law, you don't make that law, right? So that means the rich are in charge. If the politicians can somehow gain power without needing all those, um, all that political campaign money, um, then they can worry about distribution of wealth or whatever. But it's, those are the two, right, major sources of power and how they relate to each other, what they do with the resources, human resources, natural resources of a country really determines things. So I think just to give you an idea that this, this class is about what we all have in common. And I think all of you, that's all true. Um, share uh, the Google Classroom code. Actually, I'll just invite you onto the Google Classroom. Is that okay? Um, yeah, so what I do is I try to invite you on and then you're on there and you can post your posts and you get your grades and you know all that stuff. If that's okay, Jamie. Okay, it's okay, okay. Um, all right, so I gotta let you go. Some people have classes after this. If any Lion students want to hang out after class and talk about that reading on Socrates or something else, I might, I might, make lion students read a little bit more because because they don't have as much trouble reading english so they can read faster um, but if i do make you read more i'll hang out here if you have any questions i'm always going to stay online make sure everybody's questions are answered or every anybody who wants to uh talk about material is just fine right Oh, lion students have to meet outside of Alfin for a secret meeting. <laughs> oh my. Oh, <laughs> you need a secret handshake. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll see you all. Um, <laughs> okay. We'll see you. Take care. Hello. Hello, Hello professor. professor. Yes. Um, okay. So I'm going to stop the recording and then if